This video is a tutorial for Zoom on the iPad. Whilst the app doesn't have the same functionality as the desktop equivalent, it does have many powerful features and can be used to host, join or schedule meetings. This tutorial will show you all of the features currently available. Please have a look at the timestamps in the description below to see what I'm going to cover. When you open up the Zoom app, you have the option to join a meeting without signing in. A window will appear asking you to enter in the meeting ID. You'll also have the option of entering in a screen name before hitting join. You may also be asked for a password to join the meeting. If you'd like to sign up for a Zoom account, you can click sign up at the bottom. From here, you'll need to verify your date of birth and then provide your email address and a password. When you've done that, you can choose sign in. You can sign in with your email account, Apple ID, Gmail or Facebook account. When you sign in, you'll see this screen here. There are two panels to look at. We have this column on the left hand side with several different icons, as well as colored icons in the middle of the screen. Let's take a look at the settings. This can be found in the bottom left corner of the screen. The first option gives you some account settings. From here, you can set a profile photo, change your display name, or you can add a personal note. This is a bit like a status that's only seen by your contacts. From here, you can also update your password. Your personal meeting ID is also displayed here. If you want to use a custom personal meeting ID, you'll need to upgrade to a pro plan. If you've enabled any sort of biometric security on your iPad, you can enable or disable face ID or touch ID using the toggle at the bottom. And finally, you can sign out of your account. Let's start a new meeting. We can click the new meeting icon to begin. In this pop-up, you can choose to have your video on as soon as you enter and whether or not you want to use your personal meeting ID. At the bottom, we can see an option to create a new whiteboard. This is something we're going to have a look at a bit later on. Now click start a meeting. Your meeting is now live. Before we do anything else, let's have a look at the meeting settings. To do this, we can click the more icon in the top right corner of the screen and choose meeting settings. In this window, you can see there are several different options. We can change the title of the meeting. We can make sure that anyone who joins is muted and we can enable or disable the play sound when someone joins or leaves the meeting. Always show meeting controls is to do with this strip along the top. When it's disabled, this menu will automatically hide itself. If you would like some cosmetic enhancements, you can choose touch up my appearance. Also on this menu, you can enable or disable closed captioning. The next three settings allow you to choose what you can see on the screen. For example, you can enable or disable whether the participant's name is shown when they join. You can also show non-video participants and you can also see yourself on the meeting too. If we have a look at the menu along the top, we can see several different options. We can unmute or mute ourselves. We can start or stop the video. And there's a few other settings we're going to take a look at shortly. If you have a keyboard connected to your iPad, you can hold down the command key to see the shortcuts inside the app. Here we can see the shortcuts to mute or unmute yourself, to start or stop the video, to display or hide the chat, to minimize the meeting, to display or hide the manage participants window, or to close the front window. If you would like to invite participants to join the meeting, in the top right corner, we can see the participants icon. If you click on this, you can see the current list of participants inside the meeting. In the bottom left of this window, we have the invite button. From here, we can choose to invite via message. We can invite existing contacts that we might have on Zoom, or we can copy the invite link, which is the most popular way of sharing. This link can then be pasted onto another messaging app or an email. In this same window, we can also see how we might manage the participants inside the meeting. For each participant, we have the option to mute them, 
or to rename them. Now let's take a look at how we might make this meeting a bit more secure. In the top right corner, once again, we can click on the more icon. And the first option is called security. The first option allows us to lock the meeting, preventing anyone else from joining at all. If we want to verify each person being able to enter the meeting, we can enable the waiting room. We also have the option to hide all of the profile pictures for each user. Below this, we have the permissions for the participants in your meeting. You can decide whether you want to allow people to share their screen, who people can chat with, and whether they're able to rename or unmute or start their video. Once the meeting has started, you may wish to share some information with others in the meeting. Once again, in the top right corner, we have a menu item called Share Content. The first option allows us to share our screen, and anything that we have on our screen will be visible to the other participants in the meeting. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate this because I'm currently screen recording, and if I enable this, the screen recording will stop. But once you click on screen, another window will appear asking you to confirm which app you would like to share your screen to. Also on this menu, we're able to share photos from our photo gallery. Once we click on photos, our camera roll is shown, and from here we can select which photos we'd like to share in the meeting. When you've selected your photo, you can hit done. This photo is then available for everyone in the meeting to see. When you want to stop sharing the photo, we can hit stop share in the top right corner. You'll notice this has replaced the original share button. Also on this menu, there are different cloud services if you want to share a document. Not all file types are supported. Things like zip files won't work from here. But if you've got an office document, that will work just fine. Start by clicking on your desired cloud storage service. Then choose the document you wish to share. This document is then displayed for all participants in the meeting. Once again, when you want to stop sharing, hit the stop share button. Finally, under the share content menu, if we scroll down to the bottom, we're able to share a website URL. The website you share must be a secure one meaning it should start with HTTPS. Once you've typed in your address, you can hit share. Once again, this website is displayed for everyone in your meeting to see. You'll notice when we share things in the bottom right corner, there's a pen tool available. If we click on this, we're able to annotate what we have on screen. And whilst we're on the subject of annotation, let's now have a look at the whiteboard which is built into the Zoom app. Once again, click on the share content menu and scroll down to the bottom. We can now see whiteboard. Here we're presented with a blank screen ready for us to draw on. At the bottom of the screen in the middle, we can see a menu. This menu can be expanded by clicking on the arrow. This gives us several additional options. The first icon is the pen tool, which allows us to annotate on the screen. We can change the color of this tool by clicking the third icon. From here we have five different colors, black, red, yellow, green and blue. If we move along a couple more icons, we can see this one which looks a bit like a swirly S. This is the thickness of the pen tool. If we want to type text instead, this letter T is our text tool. From here, we can double tap on our screen and begin to type. The next icon along is our highlighter tool. We can use this to highlight drawings or text. This is a slightly transparent pen, which enables us to still see what's underneath what we highlight. The second to last icon is a laser pointer. Wherever we tap on the screen, for everybody else, they will see a red laser pointer. The last icon allows us to select multiple icons to move them around or to delete them. If you want to delete something in the bottom right corner of the screen, you will be able to see a picture of a bin or a trash can. 
Once we've selected our items to be deleted, we can click on that and everything will be gone. If we only want to delete a small part of something, the second icon is our eraser. You will also notice in the bottom left corner we have our undo and our redo buttons in case we've made a mistake. If we want to create additional whiteboards, in the bottom right corner we can see a square with a plus icon. By tapping on that we can create multiple whiteboards. A new icon will appear to the left of that allowing you to switch between your different whiteboards. If we want to save copies of our whiteboard, we can click on the three dots in the bottom right corner of the screen and choose Save to Photos. Back in our meeting, we may wish to use the chat function. To find that, this is under the More menu in the top right corner of the screen. The second icon down is called Chat. From here, you can send a message to send to all of the participants. If you only want to send it to one specific person in the meeting, you can tap on the blue text that currently says everyone, and from here you can choose the name of the specific participant you want to send a message to. In the top right corner, you can enable or disable chat notifications. It's possible to minimise this meeting so you can use other functions of the Zoom app whilst the meeting is in progress. If you tap on the more icon in the top right corner, and select the fourth icon down, which is for Minimize Meeting. You can now see the meeting is now minimized in the top right corner of the screen, allowing you to use different functions of the app. This can be useful if you need to schedule a further meeting, which we'll have a look at later on. To go back to a full screen version of your meeting, tap on the video in the top right corner. If you want to use a virtual background or add a filter to your video, this is now possible inside the app. Once again, tap on the More icon in the top right corner of the screen and choose Background and Filters. From here, you'll be able to set a custom background from one of their presets or upload your own. You'll also be able to use one of the many novelty filters built into the Zoom app. You'll notice at the bottom of the More menu, you can see a Raise Hand function. This could be good if you're a participant and need to get the attention of someone who's hosting the meeting. You have a range of other emojis you can also send to people in the meeting. If you want to end a meeting or to leave it, in the top left corner we can see End. From here we can end the meeting for everybody or we can just leave the meeting ourselves and let it continue. Let's have a look at some of the other icons on our home screen. The second icon allows us to join a meeting. If we've been sent a meeting ID, then we can enter it in here, followed by the password if required. If however you've been sent a Zoom link and you open it from another app, we can bypass all of this and it'll open and let you join the meeting automatically. At the bottom you can see some joining options. This is to do with whether or not you want your audio and video to be turned on or off as soon as you join. You can also enter a custom name for yourself when you join a meeting. If you want to schedule a meeting for the future, the third icon allows us to do this. Tap on Schedule. And from here, you can enter in a name for the meeting, when it should start, how long it is and what the time zone is. You can also choose which calendar you want this meeting to be added to. You can enable or disable your personal meeting ID. And from here, you can also choose a passcode that people have to enter when they want to join your meeting. From this same menu, you can also enable the waiting room. And you've also got some meeting options to do with whether the host video and a participant video is on by default as soon as people join the meeting. Under advanced options, we can see an option to automatically record the meeting. This meeting will be recorded at a specific time. You'll notice that the recording location says local computer. Currently on iOS, we cannot record directly to this device. If you have a pro plan which allows cloud recording, you can enable this in Safari by going to the Zoom website. If you want to see a list of your scheduled meetings, if we have a look on the left side of the screen, the third icon down is for meetings. And any future meetings we have will be shown here. 
If we have another look at this left panel, the second icon down is to do with chats. If we have contacts on Zoom, which is the fourth icon down, we're able to start conversations, text conversations over the Zoom app. If you need to add some contacts, you can click on add contacts here, or you can go to the contacts icon, which is the fourth one down. To add a contact, you can go to the plus icon in the top right of this column and you can invite a Zoom contact, a contact from your phone or from one of Zoom's channels. So that's it for this tutorial for the Zoom app for the iPad. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.